Hello and welcome to a 1v1 cast between Tex and Forest Radio on Calderas Refinery. Starting off we have Tex playing as the Hive Tyrant, apparently he was random but random the Hive Tyrant according to this chat, and we have Forest Radio playing as the Lord General. And so far we see Forest going for a Sentinel but nothing really stand nothing really different from the standard at the moment other than Lord General getting sent straight to mid quite aggressively here by Forest Radio. Just some standard capping going on and Lost Swam in the chat. It will be interesting to see who can bleed each other more, Tyranids or IG, since both races have lots of high model squads with low health counts. So we also have two kind of tanky commanders. Lord General could be seen as a tanky commander even though a lot of his health does come from having some retinue as well with him. The Hive Tyrant already going in here against this Lord General, lands a special, well, doesn't really land a special, but does a special, and Sentinel is going to try and poke him down from range, Lord General is just running away constantly here, and now the Hive Tyrant trying to go after the Sentinel, Lord General will turn and fire, and Tex, and Forrest just still capping the map while all this is going on. Currently a 2 and 0 cap hit, or 2 to 1 cap hit for Forrest, so is bleeding Tex ever so slightly on VPs just because he went for that early rush in mid, but at the same time Tex will probably be ahead in terms of economy just because Forrest actually sent his Lord General to mid rather than trying to capture a requisition point or a power point. And you can see that Tex has actually got both contested power points on the map right now and two requisition points, meanwhile Forrest only on a single requisition point and his natural power. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes in later. Tex going to be on a lot of power actually with three very early power caps here. So it'll be interesting to see if he's actually able to get some... Okay, he's actually got some warriors out already. Warriors cost 25 power heavy infantry and got those out quite quickly as well. And we do see that Forrest is starting to make his way now to start capping more of his requisition points. We have some Homagons here from Tex. Just being incredibly annoying Lord General. Trying to get around to try and fight these Homagons but they're just hiding around these shot blockers all the time and triple, not triple, double Termagons going to be coming towards mid. And trying to fire on the Sentinel. Sentinel is buying the Stomp upgrade as well. And the Homagons are actually trying to fight the Lord General one. The rest of new members here getting caught out of Castions on the field. Could see a shotgun blast. Could see an Orum Libel on retreat of these Homagons along with the Stomp. I don't think the Stomp is going to be doing enough damage here. But the Sentinel is kind of busy trying to fight these Termagons. We already see a Toxin Sack upgrade. And we already see a second one on the way to follow up the Warriors. A lot of Tyranid players will actually get their tier 1.5 unit out, either Warriors or Raveners, before gaining the upgrades such as Adrenal Glands or Toxin Sacks or for your Termagons and Homagons. Now Warriors are on the field, could see them go in Sentinel, getting quite low here, 300 health, missing 500, could also see the Barb Strangler upgrade come in for these Warriors against IG, very effective against large groups of units, are oh, unreliable though, so these Termagons going to be knocking them all down, Warriors leaping in onto combat, catching out the Lord General and resting members, Catachins could probably force melee onto these Warriors since they do power melee, very effective against heavy infantry, but they will be sitting at range with their shotguns, the Hive Tyrant going to try and tie up some Guardsmen here, Sentinel can stomp the Hive Tyrant to stun it in place, Toxin Sat's going to be slowing that Lord General down to nothing. Catachin's also going to be trying to come in here, but I imagine they might get slowed, or the Lord General might get slowed once again. But the Hive Tyrant is going to get kited around, and you see him backing away. Oh, reliable on to retreat with these Termagons as well. You can see that some of these models did get knocked down or retreat, and that is because you can actually knock back enemy units onto retreating units to knock them down. Although, that situations where that comes up is very rare. So one squad wasn't retreating, they could be knocked down, and they got knocked down into the retreating Termagons to knock the retreating Termagons down. We do actually have a third set of Termagons coming out here for Tex. He is the Hive Tyrant. The map is quite large, can definitely get some Broodness up and reinforce on the field, and also heal them up as well, since Broodness does grant some health regeneration to units nearby. We do also have a multi last turret coming up as well. It's going to protect Forest when he tries to push in against his power here. 428 EPs, 444 is a triple cap now for Forest Tex is falling a little bit behind on turrets. And that is going to be a almost dead guardsman squad. 6 HP it gets away with. Very fortunate here. Multi last. I don't know if it's actually going to be able to have enough damage to actually last here. Oh reliable does actually miss, actually hits this crane structure here. And Sentinel is also trying to bash the power drain. 
that's actually going to have to come into combat here. Hive Tyrant fighting and tying up these Catachins here in melee combat. Modslav's turret has been salvaged. The push is not going to happen anymore. Triple Termagons and Warriors and the Hive Tyrant is just going to be a bit too much for a double four Guardsman, Sentinel and Lord General to handle. And you see that Forrest is actually forced to retreat away his Guardsman here. Triple Termagons. Lots of piercing damage coming from those three squads together. Castachins trying to knock back some units, only catching out the Warriors. Termagons will still get to push forward and Sentinel will still have to back away as much as possible. Castachins are getting a little bit caught out here, I think. They're in the between the four squads right now. There is no melee to tie them up, Warriors are going to sit at range on the crippling poison from these Termagons. These Castachins will be stuck in place and they will be forced to retreat away here. Probably going to lose a model in retreat. Especially with these Homogons coming in for a flank as well. But the Catachin should live overall. Very low. Extremely low actually. I thought they would have had some more health than that. These Homogons will also get forced away as they chase a little bit too far against these Catachins. Trying to get a kill on them. Two out of six models on the Catachins. And there's a Brunest in mid. Very annoying to deal with. Costs 100 red to get the Brunest up. And no other resources. I believe it also costs population. But... The way he gives it's worth to pay a little bit of population cost, especially in tier 1 where you're not going to hit that pot cap ceiling anyway. The Hive Tyrant off to the side, doing some capping, the map is kind of split in half, it's fairly even right now in terms of map control. For us, having to capture is natural again, but as soon as Tex captures that then the map control will be definitely in favour of Tex as he's in control of the contested VP and contested power nodes, 350 VPs to 403. Sense not just forcing getting forced off here by these triple time guns they're just moving all the way forward here guardsmen do need to keep out of that barb strangler warrior radius as well castrogen's coming in from the side here oh unreliable going to be knocking back three squads of termagons warriors will still be free to move around some termagons might bleed here and they will probably fall back to their brood nest to get some regen and regain the models that they have lost as well lord general trying to do what he can at range with his rest new members there and Catachins do need to be careful not to get caught out by the Barb Strangler or by the Crippling Poison from these Termagons, otherwise they'll be caught face flat on the ground. Homing Guns trying to come in from the side for a Power Bash. Catachins are in the area and we even see an IED getting placed onto the ground as well. So that will stop these Homing Guns from being able to do too much or if they retreat and try and run through here as well. She'll doubt that will retreat through that path. They'll most likely retreat through this little gap over here, but Castrogens do need to be a bit careful right now. Warriors coming in, Warriors will be able to detect this IED as well. Our arrival is going to miss just because of the elevation here. Castrogens being on the high ground need to aim slightly further forward rather than behind. Actually, the IED might work here. The IED will not go off though. That might have been able to do quite some decent damage on these Homogons and they would have retreated away instead of trying to bash power. Missile launch coming in onto the Sentinel. We also have a Chimera on the way while Tex is still taking up two tier two. The Chimera will come in quite handy here, allowing the Guardsmen to reinforce and you actually have a Basilisk Barrage coming in as well. Very nice Sentinel stomach. Actually can catch our entire squad of Termagons there, doing a decent amount of damage as well. And Tex is on full retreat mode. Warriors is the only thing left on the field right now. And Home Guns. Are able to get a generator here, the IED is still not going off. Going off a little bit too late. They're only catching out one Homogon model. Forrest can easily replace the generator that he lost though. And the Chimera on the field is gonna force Tex to buy some AV, either a Venom Brood. I wonder if you'll see a Zone Throat. Zone Throat did receive some changes in the most recent patch. Slightly more expensive on terms of power and no longer snares transports. Some rippers actually gonna be coming out of here. Rippers are able to actually slow the Chimera. Each bite, I believe, reduces the speed of it by 3% up to a hard limit. But it's actually got... Rippers have got us around. Catachins are going to try and do what they can right now. Meanwhile, Forrest is going to be pushing with the rest of his forces up to the power. Once again, we do have the double plasma gun upgrade as well onto these guardsmen. Very good against warriors and other heavy infantry models such as the Venom Brood as well. If the Venom Brood is going to be coming out here for Tex. We also have Homogons gaining for a decap against Forrest's natural here. Triple Termogons coming in once again. Do need to be careful that frag missile does a lot of AoE damage. We actually have an upgrade onto the Hive Tyrant. We have the Venom Cannon along with the improved Synapse ability as well. Could be a dead squad of Homogons. Nope, they will actually get away here. Surprisingly with three models. 
and the Venom Cannon will be very effective against the Chimera. I don't know if it shows much damage, but there's 63 armor piercing damage per shot, so Forrest will need to be careful with its Chimera. But I'm not sure that a single Venom Cannon on the Hive Tyrant will be enough to actually force away the Chimera, especially with Guardsman Repair Support. The improved synapse will definitely be annoying with these triple termagants and with more brood nests on the ground. Right now, Tex does not actually have enough for a brood nest, though. You can also see these plasma guns being very effective against warriors. The only problem is that warriors will still be able to get off a shot, they won't be able to get forced away from maximum range by these guardsmen in time. But that high tyrant, though, taking a lot of damage. Guardsmen are going to be forcing them away. Termagants trying to come in here, they have no. They have nothing to actually reinforce off of compared to the Guardsmen here with their Chimera Catachins just on the side doing some capping Venom Brood coming out. Rory is going to be staying in their Barb Strangler form and we have some Adrenal Gland upgrades as well for these Homogons. No Commissar upgrades yet on these Guardsmen. I think that would be a quite a good upgrade for them to get, allow them to reinforce three at a time, giving them 12 members instead of nine. And also the Commissar does a lot of damage, and there's those Trag Missiles, Single Barrage doing a lot of damage to multiple Termagon squads there. But these Barb Strangler Warriors, very annoying, we could even see the Lord General War Gear that grants immune, um, immunity to suppression for a short period of time, you can get purchased on them. Or we could even see the Sniper Rifle get purchased to also give the Guardsmen extra range. And to try and force off the Warriors and Venom Brute easily. Rippers are getting surrounded on the Sentinel, stopping it and slowing it down to nothing. And the Venom Brute come in to actually clean house along the term guns. Guardsmen trying to get out, trying to reinforce and field these Rippers, though very small, very annoying to actually land shots onto for the Guardsmen. And Venom Brute, very nice Basilisk Barrage, actually going to force the Venom Brute away. We do also have a Brood Nest going down, and it's very difficult to actually reach the Brood Nest as well. The Barb Strangler Warriors though will land a shot onto these Guardsmen and both sides are just reinforcing here but you can see those synapse knockbacks being very painful. It's actually going to be forcing those Warrior Brood away heal packs from the Lord General. They're going to be healing up these Guardsmen back up to full health and we do have the Guardsmen going to be entering the Chimera here. Ogren is now going to be brought onto the field. I'm not sure how Ogrens are going to do though given that there are triple Termagants with Crippling Poison available. It might be very difficult for the Ogrens to actually get in range just because there's a triple slow. But because they're super heavy infantry, they'll be able to absorb a lot of damage from these Termagants who are only doing piercing DPS. And same with the Barb Strangler Warriors, they won't be doing too much damage to the Ogrens, in fact. I'm not really sure what armor piercing damage does to super heavy infantry. I believe it does do okay, but it's definitely not a counter to super heavy infantry. But the Ogren's going to be charging in here, they do have their Bonehead upgrade for members. Super Heavy Infantry, 1800 HP, so they're going to go for the Brood Nest here actually. That's a very nice target, kill the Brood Nest, kill the Kukuri Tower, kill anything that supports Tyranids. We also have the range synapse as well for the Venom Brood, so these Time Guns definitely doing a lot of damage. We also have the Commissar upgrade for Lord General, grants a little shield here to reduce incoming damage. And do see that Tex is regrouping up quite a bit. We have these Homogons still off to the side though. A Hive Tyrant coming in though for a bit of a flank. It does also have the Warp Field as well. Since it has no abilities for the War Gear it's currently got, Warp Field is an excellent purchase just because you get so much more tankiness from not having to not having to use any abilities basically. And that tankiness is coming in very handy, you can see. Hive Tyrant is able to tank quite a lot with just the energy shield there. The Homogons retreating, Venom Brood pushing in, Termogons also pushing in, Guardsmen that will need to be careful. We do have another Creeping Basilisk Barrage, looks like it'll catch out a single Venom Brood there. Nicely dodged by Tex. These Guardsmen though will need to be a bit careful, might even have to pull out of here. In fact, there's just too much damage here and they got a little bit too close as well. Castion's also here against Plant, a nice old reliable onto the group here. But then they can always fall back to the... Okay, there's actually a brood nest getting placed down. They can fall back to the brood nest and try and regen. Lord General back at base. Still no weapon or armor upgrade. Actually, there is an armor upgrade here. We have the stabilizers, which does give a lot of health regen for your guardsmen. And also increases the Lord General's health as well. The stabilizers. All these guardsmen will be healed back up to full health if stabilizers were activated. And assuming that the guardsmen take no damage, but... Very difficult fight for these guardsmen to win just because of the triple Termagons doing so much damage. Ogrens are going to be coming in, going to be a massive bullet sponge right now. 
They're not actually getting stopped by the crippling poison at all from these thermal guns, and all these thermal guns are getting knocked over by the Oberon's melee charge, or the charge ability even. And Broodnest will go down here. Thermal guns do need to be a bit careful. Oberons are kind of in their face. They also do 60 range DPS as well, piercing DPS with their main guns, which they use to hit people with. Common guns though coming in. The Ogrins actually going to be backing away here. I thought they might try and stay in here, but the Homogons with the buffs on the field right now might be a bit too much for the Ogrins to actually handle. Could also give some heal packs out to the Ogrins since you have the Sergeant on them as well. Sergeant upgrade giving those heal packs out. Guardsmen have been using heal packs fairly frequently as well this game. Tech's going to be taking up to tier 3 though. Forest not even close to tier 3. Lacking a lot of requisition right now because of all the amounts of Guardsmen bleeding. The Barb Strangled Warrior though, suppressing this Guardsman squad so it can't even move at all. <laughs> a heal pack will heal it back up to full health and Tex will get four stuff. Capillary Tower will go down, but Tex still in control of these contested powers though. I've not seen much of these Catachins throughout the game, they've mainly been on the side doing some side fighting, placing down some IDs. I think that would be good to bring into combat. You can use the Orin Reliable onto this triple Termagant blob and then let your Ogrens go in here and then. On the time guns are knocked onto the ground, they might not be able to do crippling poison, or you might be able to knock over the model that wants to do the crippling poison. But Warrior Brood going to get forced away here. These guardsmen are just going to be too good with their plasma guns against the heavy infantry of these warriors. We also did see the commissar upgrade on these guardsmen, or well, barely saw it there. Once they exit this chimera, I'll be able to see again. But the Capillary Tower will live that high start just doing a bit too much damage there with. His Ven Cannon Homogon is going to get knocked down by the old reliable Chimera back the way, does need some repairs. And yet, these Guardsmen, they both have the Commissar upgrade, reinforcing three at a time, very effective. And the Termagants as well also have their Endless Swarm upgrade, so they're reinforcing two at a time and also have ten members instead of eight as a tier two upgrade for Termagants. And Homogons might actually have the same, they also do have the same as well. Guardsmen are going to be pushing up here though. Need to be a bit careful, they might go in for a snipe against this capillary tower here. But that capillary tower's actually got some health regen, didn't realise that they had that. But Ogren's back on the field. Lord General though himself is very low, he actually has no rescue members, he's just by himself. One out of three there. No sergeant, no commissar to be with him. And we do have the push command from Tex. Barb Strangle of War is going to land a shot onto these guards. I'm going to be suppressing a single squad. Ogren's going to be charging in here. Going to try and tie up something. We do actually have Homogons coming in here. Guardsmen forced into the Chimera though. Ogrens a little bit unsupported right now. No heal pack on them, I believe. They're taking a lot of damage here. And will be forced away. But Forest still in control of mid. Tex is going to resume his little push here. And the Guardsmen are going to be firing away. Level 2 Guardsmen here for Forest. And the Guns as well, all level 2. Guardsmen do need to be a bit careful though. All of them are getting suppressed right now. And they're taking a lot of damage and are unable to fire back while getting suppressed. We need to get inside that Chimera, drive away and then re-exit the vehicle when they're no longer suppressed and then try and kite those warriors. But this Guardsman squad is getting very low. It isn't getting inside the Chimera. In fact, it will actually go down completely. That's a big loss there for Forest IED. is also going to get spotted by Warriors and the Venom Brood since both of them are Detectors as well. And Tex will be able to push in here as well, Venom Brood. Going to detect that second Castion IED warrior is also going to go and cap the VP at the same time. And Castion is still on the side, just doing some capping as well. And same for these Homogons, they've pretty much been on the side capping 1v1 in Castion throughout the entire game. Heal pack onto the Guardsmen, going to heal them back up to full health. The Commissar is being repurchased, the Sergeant also repurchased since he's been given one, giving out these heal packs. 137 VPs to 271 though. Forest is ahead in VPs, is also tier 3 as well. Tech's also tier 3 with a lot more resources, but Forest Lord General can always cool down a Lehman Rust in tier 3, costing 500 requisition and 50 power. It does actually have enough red for it since it's only 200 red. I believe that the red cost and requisition cost didn't get changed, just the power got increased to 50 and from 0. And Lehman Rust, supported by some guardsmen here, will be quite strong and 
Little Rust, the tankiest of all the tanks as well, with 800 health of the elite tank crew and also having damage resistance to everything as well, about 30%. We do also have a Basilisk here. I don't know if it's actually going to catch out any models, but it will catch out this brood nest. I'm not sure if it'd be enough to kill it. Castrons here. Surprised they're not forcing melee. It will actually be backing away. Ogrens though, forcing melee onto these Termagons. The brood nest is still up, didn't actually go down to the Basilisk off map barrage. And we're going to try and do what they can. We do also have these Venom Brood Warriors also having to back away. The Warriors also losing a couple of models here. Ogrins do lose a model themselves. Do kill the Brood Nest. Brood Nest just going to get placed right down again for Tex. And Ogrins are going to be running back to base. And that's Live Tyrant just very tanky here with his warp field activated and also having the improved synapse as well. Giving everyone synapse buffs and making them very strong. Level 3 Termagon, so 10 models having 1,636 health, that is 136 health per model, I believe, roughly. But very tanky Termagon models. Oh, and Reliable, they're going to be knocking back the Venom going to be knocking back some Termagons, and Forest is just getting forced away. He's actually building a Lehman Rust right now. Didn't actually have enough to repurchase. Didn't have enough to pull one in via drop pod, though because of that off map Basilisk and Barrage and Tex is just going to be trying to bash the generators here. Hive Tyrant looks like he's just going to go and capture or doesn't look like he's going to capture. And we have Warriors just off to the side just capping and Forest down to very low amounts of power right now. Only down to just the power node. Crippling Poison going to stop the Ogrens in his tracks. And no room in the Chimera for these Ogrens by the looks of it. The Ogrins and the Chimera getting path blocks on each other. Ogrins going to try and go in only to be hit by Crippling Poison once again. Doing very well though with their ranged weapons. About 60 DPS and as a squad with their guns. But obviously you want your Ogrins in melee combat. I think it's about 60 DPS. I believe it's 15 per model. Lehman Rusto going to get the elite tank crew upgrade. Extra 100 health and extra sight radius as well. Capillary Tower down here. Probably going to get killed. Will get killed. And Lehman is going to be pushing in now. But at the same time, Tex here with a Khan effects on the field, upgrading to a Venom Cannon onto the Khan effects. Will be very effective against both the Chimera and Lehman Russ. And we have a big fight going on here now. Lehman, though, doing a good job of just picking off some models. Basilisk Barrage going to be coming in. That's going to catch out quite a lot by the looks of it. We'll catch out the Venom Brood. Gets that away. Lehman, though, taking a lot of damage. Needs to get some repairs from these Guardsmen. And Carnifex also going to try and get some shots in. Hive Tyrant will be forced away. He's getting very low right now. Carnifex is kind of just sitting here taking some shots. And we do see that Tex is going to be pulling his army back in. Catchers could all reliable it back away though. And there we go. Hive Tyrant trying to activate that warp field. Is going to get forced off though completely. Venom Brood also coming in. Three out of three models. Bioplasma though onto the Catachins. Very nice here. And it looks like we have some units coming in. Throw flank some Homogons and some Warrior Brood. Meanwhile, Ogren's going to be pushing forward. Forrester's just going to be pushing his entire army forward right now. And the Vanguisher Cannon on this Lehman Rust is going to be sniping that Brood Nest. That Venom Brood also looks like it's going to go down completely. And that Carnifex will also go down. Homogon's trying to come in for a flank. Not going to be very effective against the Lehman Rust on the field, though, or against this Chimera. But the Chimera is getting a bit low. Guardsman do need to repair this Chimera right away. They are repairing it right now, in fact, while at the same time trying to fight. His warrior brood up on the hill. Lord General even gain out as well. The Chimera will live. Homogon's bleeding too many models. Might actually go down as a squad completely. And Tex is going to lose two squads down here. Forest is behind on VPs right now. 137 to 103. But Forest killing quite a lot of Tex's army. Killing the Venom brood. Killing some Homogon's. Killing the Carnifex. Some big losses there. And Warriors are going to get forced off, I would imagine, fairly soon. We actually have. The without number ability going to be dropping down some homogons and homogons where the warriors are to actually support them and reinforce the warriors as well. An extra model because I believe they did lose one. Another creeping basilisk barrage coming in here for forest as well is going to actually miss but is going to force them to go a round the cliff instead of this way since if they went the other way they would get knocked over. Warrior model actually going to get popped here. Castion's Guardsmen are going to be able to force off these Homogons and force off these Termogons. Lehman Rust also doing a very nice job here. Level 2 Lehman Rust as well now after that massive battle going on here. Homogons trying to do what they can. Castion's going to go in for the cap. Lord General is also trying to cap in mid as well with that Lord Commissar. 
or the Commissar shield activated, not the Commissar. The Lehman is also here in the area, You're going to be able to pick away some models, do a lot of damage to this Hive Tyrant, even with the warp field on, it's doing so much damage, it's actually just chunking that energy shield off from him. And the side bosses as well are going to be very effective against all the infantry on the field. That Hive Tyrant getting very low right now. Ogren is coming back into the fight. Castigen is still capping over here. We'll probably jump into the fight fairly soon. Crippling Poison onto the Ogren's Hive Tyrant extremely low. Forest isn't able to actually push in time. Isn't actually able to cap this in time either. And Tex will be able to brute force his way in with a massive army supported by a brood nest. And Tex is going to be the winner.